The Honest to God series with Angel Rose and Ahanu. You are all very, very welcome. I am Ahanu and with me is my lovely Angel Rose. People are demanding answers. Basically exposing the truth. For us to explore in more detail today. This is the time period of truth being exposed of all the unhealed stuff coming out. So make sure you tune in. You can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio and on our website at worldofempowerment.com. Don't miss an episode. Episode. Hit the subscribe button now. Good morning, everybody. This is Ann Gale Rose talking to you from lovely but cold Bend, Oregon. And my dear beloved Ahanu today is a little bit under the weather, so he won't be joining us this morning. Usually it's the other way around where I'm under the weather and He's doing it by himself. But today, his voice is just a little groggy from the shift in weather. And so I'm here with you today. I want to talk today a little bit about fear. And this is a subject that we've covered before. And I just want to address it again because I've had some new insights about it. So for myself, in the past couple of months, I've had an issue going on with my leg where I haven't been able to get up and around much. I haven't been able to do too many things. Um, Basically, I've just been laying low, hibernating, doing work that doesn't require my physical self. So I was taking a trip recently to San Diego to see my daughter. And I go through... I don't like flying. I I just, it's gotten worse over the years and it makes no logical sense. But anyway, I was on the airplane asking for help from source to help me understand this fear I have about flying. And immediately I was brought back to almost like a videotape where I was being shown how I had been judging myself in the past couple months. And the judgment went like this. I was feeling inadequate because I hadn't been able to do what I normally do. I was comparing my progress with that of others. I was feeling down on myself for not producing more, um, not getting with it more, if you know what I mean, taking down times, things like that. And so I was shown how I was doing this to myself, and then I was shown how other people around me would have similar thoughts, you know, wanting me to get up out of bed, wanting me to get going with things, uh, looking at me as if I was deliberately making this up somehow where other people had to help me more. So there was this cycle of judgment and comparison and projection happening. And what I was being shown was that whenever that happens, you don't feel safe. Whenever that happens, you start to feel fearful. So what's the fear about really? It's really about the fear that you're not safe, that you're going to be punished somehow for not producing, not measuring up, not being good enough. So it was it was a vicious cycle, psychological cycle, I have to say, where those particular things lead to this fear of being judged and being punished. And I have to stress that it's a psychological activity that goes on in the mind. So Once I realized that, what also came was the truth, where Source was reminding me that you don't have to earn your way to God, that you do not have to measure up to anything to be loved by God, to deserve goodness all the days of your life, I must say, that I was perfectly fine just the way I am, that there was no higher source that was looking down on me, judging me, scolding me, or anything like that. That I had to be reminded that 
all is well, that if I wanted to take the whole year and do nothing, that would be fine as well, that no one had a right to judge me for what I'm doing or not doing, and I shouldn't be doing it to myself. And I have to say, as I was being reminded of the truth of God's love, the fear disappeared. It completely disappeared. And I was filled with peace and calm. And this is important also because since then, we've been re-listening to some of our lessons in The Course in Miracles. And today's lesson happened to be Love Holds No Grievances. And the lesson went on to talk about love and that God's love does not hold grievances against us or anything we do or don't do. That love doesn't do that. Its quality does not do that. And again, it was another reminder because it went on to an exercise where you would close your eyes and kind of do a mental scan of anybody that you would hold grievances against. Whether they were little or big, it didn't matter. Just close your eyes and kind of assess who you were holding grievances against. And that includes yourself as well. And it was making the point to say that every one of us holds grievances against somebody. Like I say, could be very tiny things, could be big things, didn't matter that we all do it. And then it went on to remind us as well that when we do do that, we will never feel safe. And this is so important, especially in today's world where we look around, we're watching earth changes occur, we're watching crazy politics, division and separation, as well as people coming together, new things being invented. So we have this mixed bag going on. But for myself, as somebody who deals with clients on a daily basis, there is this pervading fear that is going on with people about feeling unsafe in this world. And so this lesson was addressing, well, where does being unsafe come from? And what it seems to be implying is that it comes from judgment or holding grievances. So there's plenty to hold grievances about in this world. If you just listen to the news or you start talking about the politics of the day, that you automatically your mind goes to this or that and what you think about it and what others think about it and how they're behaving. And so it makes the point that as long as we're doing that, we will never feel safe. Years of research, thousands of profound statements, hundreds of sessions, miles of transcripts, months of listening, a vast archive of personal power and spiritual awareness awaits you. Join worldofempowerment.com today, a members-only website of practical spirituality for your fast-changing world. worldofempowerment.com Ahanu's book, The Reincarnation of Columbus, is his true story of the loss of his first child, his pain and struggle with grief, and the guilt that followed. It forms his entire philosophy of life and is a superb rendering of the unfolding of spiritual awareness. The reincarnation of Columbus is a true epic voyage from the pain and sorrow of a father's grief to a new world of empowerment, love, and forgiveness. Get your copy on Amazon.com or on Kindle for $2.99 by searching for A-H-O-N-U or visit http colon slash slash the reincarnation of Columbus dot com. That's all one word. The reincarnation of Columbus dot com. And again, it's a psychological process that happens. And it reminds me also, and here's another way of explaining this, is that years ago, 
I was in a situation where I was not having my children see a particular person because that person was toxic to them, right? So my husband and at the time and myself had made the decision that we would be not allowing our children to be around this person. And this went on for probably a year, I'd say, until there came a point where I needed to go somewhere for the weekend, and so did my husband, and there was no one to watch the children. Well, this person who we're talking about wanted to take the children for the weekend, and my husband agreed to it when I wasn't home. And when I came home and I found that out, I was furious with him for doing that. But anyway, then I was walking into the kitchen and I heard this voice say, well, no, let me back up a little bit. I was really angry that my husband agreed to let this person have the kids for the weekend. And they had to fly to where this person was and they had to fly by themselves. So immediately I went into this fear about their safety. But as I went into the kitchen Source was showing me how my judgment against that person automatically made me feel that I was going to lose my kids. In other words, the judgment produced guilt in my mind, and that guilt made me feel fearful that I was going to lose my kids. And it showed me the whole way the mind works in that way. And I caught it and I went, wow, because it happens so fast that you don't realize it. Well, of course, I surrendered my grievance about this person and the children went and they had a fine time and all of that, you know. But it's the same thing when we're talking about love and grievances, that psychologically the process goes is that whatever you judge you will feel fear around. And that fear can turn back on yourself. It can turn back on somebody that you care about that all of a sudden you're starting to worry about. Okay, so it makes the point that judgment itself makes us feel basically that we can't trust life, that we can't trust the future. And Hannah and I were talking about this earlier today with this lesson in the course about grievances and safety, the the connection between holding grievances and feeling unsafe, that they go hand in hand together. So how do we feel secure in a world where things all around us seem to be filled with judgment and grievances of all types? But it has to be done from within ourselves. It's our own responsibility to be kind of monitoring our own minds and where they go and the thoughts that we that pop up when we're around any sort of a situation. But I think it's an important point to make today because of the connection between judgment and projection onto others and blame and the feeling of being unsafe. So when it says love holds no grievances, it means that we need to be shifting our minds over to that reality where all we're thinking, perceiving, and feeling is an awareness that love doesn't judge. And it makes the point in this lesson, too, about our perceptions about God's source that we make a God in our own image. So if we believe in judgment and grievances and guilt and punishment, we will create a God that is also like that. But it isn't the truth. That my experience from so many years of being in the records is that God's source is a God of unconditional love, not judgment of any type, that the only thing that's offered is another opportunity to love. No matter who you are, what you've done, 
love is always what it's all about in the end. And there's varying degrees of this too, because we're not talking about allowing an abuser in your life, for example, but you can distance yourself from somebody who's abusive and do it without wanting that person to be punished or condemned in any way. So we have to be clear here. And people can get confused about that, that when you say love holds no grievances, that it means that you should allow any type of person in your reality, no matter who they are. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a psychological perception and how you view things and how you think about things. And we can even briefly bring in the whole topic of karma. Karma being the law of cause and effect. And how many times when somebody does something that we perceive as evil or not good, that our minds go to, well, they'll get there someday. And that's exactly what this lesson is saying, that as long as we are in that frame of mind, that we will, we will not feel safe. We will not trust that all that we should be receiving is goodness. That's what love does. Love offers only goodness and happiness. And another lesson I love in the Course is when it says that God's will for you is perfect happiness. And it means it, that and nothing else. And so I'm just going to conclude this little lecture today, if I call it that, in realizations that I've had myself that we really do need to be letting ourselves off the hook and not be judging ourselves or comparing ourselves or be worried about if we're earning our way up the ladder to God, that we're already loved by God and accepted by God no matter what. That's the mind shift that we have to have where we can embrace that truth and know that it's true for everybody. You have been listening to Anne Gail Rose on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. 